Welcome to Godfather Barbecue in Italian. Here it is. Been getting a lot of requests. The Holy Grail. Sunday gravy. Italian American style. Let's talk just for a quick few minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to um, move quick through this. It's not a lot of work, but it is time consuming, so I don't wanna end up with a 30 minute video. But I do wanna make sure you get all the info you need to make the best Sunday gravy you ever had. A real authentic Northeast Sunday gravy. So gravy sauce. This is the debate. It's it's like was it the chicken or the egg that came first? From what our family always refer to it as a sauce, okay? Gisto si chiama sugo in Italian. We call the sauce. Oggi fatta gravy. So today we're going to make gravy in the Italian-American version. So the, the, the closest I can, or the best scenario I can, that makes sense to me of talking to everybody about this great debate, it's, it's such a debate up here. When the Italians came over, um, like if you go to Italy, you won't see the word gravy on a on a sauce. To me, as a kid, that was something you put on chicken, or a roast, or whatever. It seemed that the best explanation explanation I've gotten is it was an assimilation, meaning early Italians that came over here from the late eighteen hundreds till the mid fifties, early sixties, and drove. So obviously they're still coming, but um, in, in masses had to learn very quickly how to assimilate Italian and English in, in, in their way. And they seem to assimilate pouring something over, whether, you know, be a, a sauce over pasta as gravy in America because people pour gravy over stuff. So that kind of made sense to me. Is it the truth? I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, we call it, um, Ameri we call it sauce in the Italian, in the pure Italian side of our family, but in everyday, nowadays culture, it's referred to as gravy. If I ever said to my ma, my mother, Ma, you're making gravy today, she'd say I'm still not, I'm crazy. Oh, bots, nuts. So, anyway, here's the star of the show. I'm going to go through the ingredients real quickly with you. It's the meat. The meat is the star of the show. The, the gravy, and, and to me, when I think of the word gravy, means in, in this venue flavoring of the of the sauce so the meat is going to be the star of the show i've got some pork ribs try to find if you can it's not the end of the world if you can't my grandparents often did it without but if you can get bone in pork or even bone in steaks or short ribs whatever the bone tends to give the the sauce that extra velvety body if you will so I've got some bone-in country-style pork ribs. I've go ahead. I've, I've went ahead for the sake of time and pre-seasoned the steak and the pork with just salt and pepper, both sides. We're uh, running some hot sausage today. My brother-in-law is coming up from uh, Florida. He likes it, likes it hot. My son Eddie likes them hot, so we're gonna rock some hot sausage today. And of course, my world-famous balls. Okay, if you haven't looked or checked it out, go ahead. That that whole video is another video so check those out but these are the end result of that video I'm going to haven't decided yet I, you, you can drop these in whole fry them bake them uh, and, and this is the last hour of the sauce you don't want to put them in too early or they tend to dry out or fall apart okay we've got tomato paste butter which is a, a secret I'll share with you wine I prefer white wine it, it gives the sauce a little more a little extra zing um to me the other main ingredient is good olive oil extra virgin if you can if not regular is fine got some chopped onion that's about uh one and a half onions i'm going to do four cans today we'll put the recipe down below based on a three can recipe but i'm going to make some extra and it freezes well so that's why we use it for chopped garlic basil whole basil leaves I don't chop them I rip them they say if you chop them with a knife it affects the the acidity and the leaf and it you won't get the, the same flavor some salt pepper and good crushed tomatoes okay if you can't find 
good crushed canned tomatoes. You can use whole tomatoes, canned whole tomatoes. Just grind them up or crush them up with your hands. But gravy is more of a, a smoother, consistent texture. So I, I like that. We'll also add some, I don't have it here obviously, but we'll have some, we'll add some water with the cans when we're done. And uh, that's it. I'm going to start by browning off the meat, putting it aside, back to the same pot. It's all one pot except for the pasta. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll do the onions, garlic. We'll add in the other stuff and we'll see you soon. Okay, so I've went ahead and uh, coated the bottom of the pan with some olive oil and heated it up pretty well. Not to the point of being smoking, but you want to make sure when you put your meat in, you get that nice sear on it. And also, you don't crowd the pan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to work in batches with this. If you crowd the pan, it'll just end up steaming it. You won't have a nice um, brown crust on it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get those in there. That's the sound you should hear. And I'm going to let those sit until they move around freely. Don't try to flip them too quick. They'll stick and you won't get the desired texture that you need from them. The other thing with um, ingredients, one thing we never put in, and this is just us, my family, uh, but... It was kind of like the running joke. You never use sugar or oregano, okay? Oregano, we're not making pizza here. And the sugar, if you do it right, let the, let the gravy or the sauce cook long enough. A little bit of wine will automatically sweet. And the meat, the pork especially, will, will give you sauce, your sauce, your gravy, a nice flavor. So no, no need for sugar. That was the quickest way to the graveyard in our house. My grandfather would have you whacked and buried before the pasta finished cooking. So we don't uh, we don't do that. Okay, so I've been sweating these onions for about 10, 12 minutes, and it's crazy because although they looked caramelized and brown they're really not that's all the fawn from the meat that's again i keep saying it what makes this gravy you're going to taste that meat throughout every bite whether you have meat on your fork or not transported through the gravy itself at this point i'm going to put the garlic in i had this at the end you got to be careful with garlic it burns quick so i'm only going to let this roll for about a minute until it becomes fragrant. You can smell it. Stir that in. I'll start raising the heat at this point. Back up to where it was. Because the next step is going to require some higher heat. All these ingredients will be in the description at the bottom. If you have any questions, just ship them to me in the comments. And again, like everything we cook, everything's flexible. If you don't like garlic, don't use it. Some people only use garlic. Some people only use onions. Some people say they cancel each other out, so if you use them both, you're wrong. I don't know how accurate that is because my family's been using them both for hundreds of years, so who knows, maybe even longer. All right, that garlic's starting to smell really good. And you can see a lot of the fond has already been picked up by the onion sweating. So that's nice. This is going to be incredible, guys. Okay, so at this point, crank that heat up. I'm going to add my one cup of wine. Very important with this step, you let it cook out the alcohol bean. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bitter gravy. I'm gonna mix it all up. Let that cook out for three to five minutes. It should reduce by about half the liquid. That's how you know you've got the alcohol out. Okay, as you can see, 
this has reduced nicely. You start to see the top of the onion. So I don't want to pull all that liquid out, so I'm going to move on. Here's the money right here. This is an old school American Italian gravy trick. Not many people know about it. So again, getting exposed to some serious info here. Stick of butter, let that melt down. That's gonna give the gravy that nice velvety lusciousness. Okay, now we're gonna add our tomato paste. This is, I use a whole tube, it's about four ounces, no more than that. This will also provide you a little sweetness and a little richness as far as the tomato flavor goes. And it'll um, also provide you some, some more body thickness to the sauce. Gravy. Mix that up, make like a little, I wouldn't say real, but mixture here. It's gonna go about two two minutes. Let the paste absorb all those flavors. Make sure all your fond is up or it will, it will end up burning on you throughout the cook, so this is good. Okay, that's been rolling for about three minutes. Perfect consistency there. Should still be liquidy. If not, you can always add a little water to it. Now we're going in with the co-star of the show, the tomatoes. It's funny, I remember my grandmother, Nina. You should take these cans when I, because I'm going to add some water to this now. About, about three cups to start with, or you know, add, slowly adding it until I get the consistency I want. Sometimes it's three cups, four cups. Depends on the tomatoes. Every brand uses a different amount of water when they can them, so you want to be careful when you are adding that water to it. But my grandmother used to take the, each can and rinse it out, get every drop of tomato out there. Not just her. I've seen a lot of people do that. I found it always humorous. So that's pretty thick as you can see. So I'm going to start with about yeah, two cups. I don't like my sauce thin, but I do like some body to it. I want it to stick to the pasta here, but also want it to pour nice. So yeah, I'm going to end up using four cups here. You can always add it. If, if, if you put too much, it'll, it'll boil out anyway. Occasionally, you'll be adding water as you go if it, if it continues to thick, which it will because of the paste. Okay, that looks good. Salt and pepper. General rule of thumb, one teaspoon per can for salt and a half teaspoon per can for pepper. Okay, I am going to, at this point, add just a little bit of basil, and a lot of times this ends up cooking it, and best to add it at the end, but I, I do like the flavor it gives, the mild flavor when you're cooking through it. Okay, we're going to mix all that up. The meat now the meat I believe I started to say if not the deal with this meat is I'm gonna add the sausage and beef pork tends to quick uh, to cook quicker and ends up falling apart now like a lot of people like that they want the shredded pork in the gravy and that's fine I, I like to like my ribs um, have some bite left on the bone and be able to Pick it up, put that juice in there too. Pick it up and uh, eat it or cut it with a fork and knife. Okay, so mix it up. 
I'm going to cover this, bring it to a roll and boil, and then we're going to simmer it. And another fallacy about gravy or sauce is you need to cook it all day. And I have no problem with that, um, but generally after two hours the tomatoes are cooked, I generally cook my, my sauce or gravy for three to four hours. After the first hour, I'll add those rib, those pork ribs in, because those generally take two and a half to three hours to get them the way I like them. So I'm figuring if I'm gonna do this sauce for four hours, it's gravy, I keep calling it sauce, sorry. We'll uh, put those in at about the one hour mark and figure another three hours from that point. After it comes to a roll and boil, I'm gonna move it to the back burner on a, on a simmer where it's just barely bubbling. You don't want a rolling cook here. You want it to slowly simmer away and with the lid a little bit of jog with the spoon like that, okay? So we're gonna wait for this to come to a rapid boil, put it on low heat in the back. And then it's easy sailing for the next few hours, except for putting the pork in and then the meatballs for the last hour. Still haven't decided whether I'm gonna fry or put them in raw. Oh, I've made my mind up by then and you'll see the results. So we'll see you soon. Okay, back, it's been a little over an hour. Again, this is timed based to when you expect your end of gravy time to be. Again, I'm assuming we're figuring on about four hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the pork. Ribs, these look nice. Huh? You see how that sauce is going? That's actually a little bit higher than, eh, that's fine. Simmering like that is the key. Put that juice in, don't forget that. Stir. You can see, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, there's a little of that oil starting to come to the top. So we'll start skimming as I stir. It's not too bad, but some people just stir it in. I, I, I tend to think it gives it too heavy of a flavor. This isn't a lot at all, but just as an example so you can see. Generally, it pulls up around the sides, a little river there. It's very minimal. I mean, this is fine. I wouldn't even stop to skim it at this point, but I'm just feeling it as though we may have to. At some point, the uh, meat will draw that activity too. All right, pork's in. Continue simmering and stirring every 20, 25 minutes in this case. And then according to whatever type of pot bottom you're dealing with. We'll keep Just keep an eye on it is the key. Okay, we'll be back soon. Okay, so I've decided to fry the meatballs instead of putting them in raw. Mainly because um, the Italian Sunday sauce I'm going to do, that's how we do it that way. My grandparents never fried them. My mom either. This is more of a, an Italian-American deal. So I'd say 9 out of 10 gravy, Italian-American gravies, both fry their balls. The other 10% usually bake, bake them. Very, very, very rare to see raw meatballs. In, a, in Italian American gravy. I mean, the, it, people are out there that do it, but I would say eight or nine, ten, eight or nine out of ten percent are going to be fried. And you know, some people bake them because they're, they're more health conscious. But okay so we dropped our balls and cooked them for another hour this is the end result enjoy subscribe like and share please and we'll see you soon